For it to happen on our doorstep in our city was pretty much life changing for all of us. And tonight we're raising money for the victims of the Manchester bomb and for myself and everyone involved with the night, really, really can't thank you enough for coming. The idea of tonight is to celebrate the music of the greatest city in the world, which is of course Manchester music. And I've got some of my best friends from all over the country here with me tonight uh, to keep you entertained right through till one o'clock in the morning. A big thank you to Nordic Cricket Club for allowing us to do the event tonight. And when the event got booked, there was one person who's a fan of Manchester music. I don't think there's any bigger legend in cricket, and it is an absolute honour to have her with us tonight. We're going to ask him a few questions. We're going to get him to pick a few favourite Manchester tunes, and then you'll get a chance to meet him. Will you please welcome a real-life legend, Mr Andrew Freddie Plintoff. <laughs> Okay, listen, I could stand here all night and ask him loads and loads of questions about cricket. I'm not going to. I'm going to let you do that. But there's one thing I want to ask is, you've got a close connection to Manchester. You're from the North West. A week last Monday, 10.33, social media, the news and everything got full of reports of something that, to be honest with you, for the first 12 hours was pretty hard to believe it happened in Manchester. Where was you last Monday when you heard the news? Yeah, I, I was at home and the missus woke us up about quarter past six um, and she'd been on social media, she'd been on the internet telling us what had happened and I think like a lot of people initially it was like disbelief, um, shock and then when it started to sink in, I was in Manchester all day on the Tuesday and you found yourself speaking to people and just welling up because although I'm from Preston, that's my hometown um, I moved to Manchester when I was 16 to play cricket for Lancashire, moved to Charlton and Manchester is very much my adopted city. And you, you rightly say, you see these things happening all over the world and you see them in different cities and you think, you know, that, that's, that's horrific. But when it happens in your own backyard, it's, it's completely different. And it happened at the MEN, a concert like Ariana Grande, when my kids would have probably have gone if it wasn't for exam week. So that, that day I dropped my kids off the bus stop for school and I didn't want to let them go. You hold on to them that little bit tighter and a little bit longer, tell them you love them. And I went to the vigil as well on the Tuesday night in Manchester and it was so moving. Obviously there's the speeches and everyone talking at the front, but you got a real sense of what Manchester and the North West is all about. All these people from different backgrounds, different races, different religions, all getting together. Um, to support the city and more importantly support the victims was real touching. I, w I was there and I found myself, even when it was over, not being able to move. I was just stood there rooted to the spot, um, just in tears, thinking about how this could happen. And, you know, everyone says that you've got to carry on as if you, as you did before, but it's, it's easier said than done, you know. You, you start thinking about where you go and what you do, but... The one thing that came through from me was um, Manchester, the passion of the place. You know, the love that Manchester as a city has and for all the wrong reasons it was on the world stage that day and still is. But the one thing that shines through is the pride that that city has and our city has. So, yeah, that was something so horrific. You see people now raising money. We've got a big concert at Old Trafford tomorrow where she's coming back to play and you see all these people supporting it. and. Why it's night tonight is just so special. You know, the cricket community is one that's been so good for me. And when you see things like tonight, you know, Jenny, um, she mentioned it and says, if you don't come here, you won't be bothering fat people's clothes any longer. <laughs> um, so, Kim, I'm only joking, we do all sizes now. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, it, it, it was a no-brainer to come down. And it, it's nice to see people I've not seen for a long time, like Dexter Fitton. You know, he, he, dis, he dispels the myth that you get fitter once you retire. Uh, he, was, he was one of the first people I batted with. Um, I was playing for Lancashire second team when I was 15. I went out to bat and Dexter, it was his last game, I think. And his, his chat to me was, all right, son, he says, don't worry about what I'm doing. So I'm just going to try and hit every ball for six. You get your head down, son, and crack on. Um, but cricket's so good. You meet so many people, and you lose touch, and it's just nice to see people. It's nice to see everyone getting in tonight and getting together to support such an amazing, amazing fun. You touched upon a lot of things there, and you mentioned the fact that it happened at a concert. That I think that's what we're all struggling to handle, the fact that, you know, 
it could have happened at Old Trafford at a football match, it could have happened at Old Trafford, you know, at a cricket match, you know, the core team as well last week. The fact that it happened at, you know, a concert that was aimed at children, it, everyone more in disbelief than anything. I know that last week you were at the Cortina's gig at Old Trafford. I was there myself. I've been to thousands of concerts over the year and there was just something about that night. And obviously tonight's all about Manchester music. There was something about that Cortina's gig that was, it was different to any other gig I've ever been to before. What was it to you, the Cortina's gig? How, how did you find it? Was it a normal concert that everyone forgot about what had gone on? Or was there something there that, you know, I think every, everybody, you can't forget what's happened. Everybody turned up to support, obviously, the Cortinas, but to support everyone who's been involved in it. Um, you had the Blossoms there as well, and the Charlottons, I'm a massive fan of. And there's a real different sense in the crowd, you know. The crowd were quite well behaved for a Cortinas gig, weren't they? They were respectful. Unbelievably. I know, because they can be shocking. Um, but yeah, there was. And I think, again, on Sunday, when we go to Old Trafford for the big concert, it's going to be different again. Um, you know, it's a chance for Manchester to show what it's all about. They did that with the Cortinas, and then on um, on Sunday night, Old Trafford, it'll be the same again. Absolutely. Well, we spoke about Manchester. I can't thank you enough from myself, the cricket club, and everyone here tonight for joining us tonight. Uh, we spoke about Manchester music, what Manchester means to you, you know, from your early days of cricket to obviously now. Uh, and one thing I want to do is ask a few people if you've got any questions. Now, we're not going to keep this going all night because obviously uh, Trey's got stuff to do. We want to crack on with the Manchester music. We do want to ask if anyone's got any questions. We're just going to do five or six of these. Uh, any questions for the legend that is Freddie Flintsoff? Uh, this gentleman's obviously ready to start. What's your name, sir? Jeff Hassan. Kevin, any questions for Freddie? Um, you've done more or less everything now. I've sat with James Corden. I've James Corden, know about that. Um, <laughs> well, I've, I've sat with Jack more times. I'm trying to get to Jamie, but I think he's out of my league. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been interesting. As, as a kid growing up, all I wanted to do was be a cricketer. And I dreamt every day of playing for Lancashire, playing for England. And every day doing that is like the best day of your life. And it finished at 31. I didn't know what I'd do. And I stumbled into this TV stuff with a league of their own. And it was, it was never the plan, to be honest. And then now, you know, I've traveled around the world doing different stuff, you know, trying to flog fish and chips and barbecues and all. You know, I've, I've got bills. Um, you know, I even did I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here in Australia, did the first series. And that was the easiest money I've ever earned in my life. Um, you just sit there doing no. What's next? I've done it. Started doing a bit of acting. I've just not as serious as I have yet. Um, I've just played a part in a BBC drama. Um, I've just got to make me mind. This is with the weirdest. I'm making my mind up at the minute. I've been asked to do play a lead role in a musical. <laughs> well, why is everyone laughing? Is there anything you won't do? I won't box again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. Why not? Well, I must admit, I realised pretty soon into boxing I wasn't cut out for it. I, I didn't, I didn't like punching people, and I didn't like being it neither. Um, I, I, I did it. The, the original plan was I was going to wrestle. I wanted to wrestle the Undertaker in Manchester. Retired now. So I went to wrestling school and I couldn't do it. So I thought I'll box instead, and it all hit me because I, I did the press conference the day before. We'd sold out the arena. Well, with ten thousand tickets. And I'd not met me opponent, I didn't know who he was, and I was sat next to him in a press conference. He was called Big Bad Richard Dawson from America. And they wanted to know a bit about him, so the press has asked him a question. I said, what do you do, Richard? He says, well, I'm a debt collector. I thought, oh, God. <laughs> and, then, and they said, um, so tell us a bit about your life. He says, well, I've been shot four times. Said, oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> and then this American journalist asked me a question. He said, what about you? I said, well, I used to play a bit of cricket. <laughs> you know? I wear whites and we stop every two hours for sandwiches. It's, I bet you're shitting yourself, Richard, aren't you? But um, I wouldn't do that again. But the one thing about it is, is that I've got no fear of trying something. I've got no fear of having a go and failing. Um, and I'll fail so many times, I'm sure I will. But I've got a fear of not trying. And if there's an opportunity to have a go at something, I'll, I'll do it. Another question. Good question. If you were to host a dinner party, who would be the top of your list, alive or dead? 
alive or dead. I'd, have, I'd get a few of my mates round. Um, I'd get my mate Paddy. Um, I think she means famous people. Elvis. 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 That actually brings us on to the next question, actually. It comes from Mackers. No. Would you be able to give us one of your went off renditions of um, Elvis? Maybe at the end. Maybe at the end. Have we got any more quick and lazy questions? Anyone? Gentleman over the. Come on, fella. <laughs> Can we have the true story about how he ended up on the pedalo? <laughs> well, for, for those who've not heard about this pedalo, um, I'm not 100% sure what happened myself. I was smashed. Um, we'd, we'd played first game of the World Cup against New Zealand in the West Indies and we got beat, I got out first ball, I had a bit of a shocker and all the lads went out and I thought, you know what, I'm going to be good, I'm going to stay in my room and I, I was staying in my room until about half nine, ten o'clock and then I just wanted to get out so I went for a walk and I ended up in a bar in St Lucia with one of the umpires um, Steve Davis, he's called from Australia, I started drinking rum punch and it's not really my tip all that and you're not, you're not quite sure how much rum they're putting in and then about half one in the morning, I was so drunk, so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go back to the hotel and sort myself out. But to get from the reception of the hotel to my room, I had to walk across the beach. So I was walking across the beach and I saw some ships out at sea, some boats. And I knew that Siri and Botham were staying on the boat. And I've been doing a bit of swimming. So I thought, that'd be a nice surprise, I'll just turn up on Beefy's boat for a night catch. And then I thought, no, I'm not going to swim. And then next to the Audi maker stuff, there was some uh, kayaks. But I couldn't find any oars for the kayak. I said oars. <laughs> you know, I'm not a footballer. You know? <laughs> so then, then I thought I'd get a pedlo out. So I got this pedlo out and I, I tried to get it into the water and I tried to get on it and I couldn't. I was too drunk. The security guard ended up coming and getting me out, taking me back to my room. <laughs> And then I woke up in the morning because the door was going. And you know when you've had a few and you, you open your eyes and then you think, oh God, what have I done? And I'm still in my clothes, there's sand in my feet, I'm wet through. I opened the door, it was a coach who wasn't too impressed. The news had broken, the news of the world. Um, that I was hammered trying to get home on a pedal. <laughs> and then I had to fly. The worst thing was I had to phone the missus to warn her because it sat there and says, look, um, I've got to do the press in a minute. She says, all right, because the game, someone's doing the press. I said, yeah, but it's a different sort of press conferences. She said, what have you done? I said, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> and it was Mother's Day as well. Then I phoned my mum up. I said, mum, don't buy a paper tomorrow. <laughs> and then, then I phoned my gran up, because my gran was alive at the time. I says, gran, you, you've not bought a paper, have you? She says, no, no, no. She says, but the strange thing was, I had this reporter from the Daily Mail on the doorstep today. <laughs> saying that you've been drinking. I said, well, what did you say? She said, well, it's a little rum do if you can't go out for a good bender every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, good. not what we're after. A lot of questions answered there. Okay, we'll do two or three more questions, then we've got a question off Trevor, who's doing Facebook Live for us tonight, and then, uh, well, he's admitted it, we'll have a Facebook rendition of Elvis. One more question from the gentleman over here. Not so in the mood around or out, but what's your worst moment in cricket? Worst moment in cricket? Oh, there's been a lot. Um, <laughs> it's strange because I can remember I can remember all the failures more than I can any successful times. So they're the ones that stick out in your head so many times. I'll be honest with you, being England captain, getting beat 5-0 isn't ideal. Um, that was shocking, that was. It's like you couldn't escape it everywhere you went. Um, that was bad. Playing at Ed Edinley. You know, as a Lancashire player, you play at Edinley, and you walk out, you field in front of that stand, the Western Terrace, full of knobs, and you just, you just get abused by everyone. And you look round, and there's some bloke having a go at you dressed as Scooby-Doo. And it's like, it's weird, and the first four games, I've, well, the first two test matches I played for England at Edinley, I got four ducks. You know, I, I just won away from my Olympic badge, I had my Audi badge. Um, so yeah, there's, there's so many, so many bad days. That's how you bounce back. Yeah, it's how you bounce back. I'm, I'm still trying to bounce. Good question. <laughs> Two more questions, then we've got a question over here, gentlemen over here. Who's the best opponent you've ever played? Good question. Who's the best opponent you've ever played against? 
I was lucky I played against a lot of meat heroes. Um, I'd love to have played against Sir Viv Richards, but didn't get a chance. Um, Sachin Tendulkar was one which always brought the best out in you. I remember I was playing for Lancashire under 13s. I was coming home in the car. We'd been playing at Delft. And was listening, when my dad's 14, I was listening to the radio and Sachin Tendulkar was 16, scoring his first 100 at Old Trafford. I and never did I think that I'd play against him. And it's quite strange because when I played against him and bowled at him, I wanted to get him out, don't get me wrong, but I also wanted to impress him. I wanted him to walk away thinking, like, he's, he's quite good. And when you batted, if you played a good shot, I'd look around for a bit of a nod from Sachin that never happened, like. <laughs> and even now it's really strange because. I, I've played against him so many times, but I don't know him. I can't speak to him, because I just turn into a tongue-tied idiot. You know, I, I get starstruck. Uh, of all the people I've ever met, I've never been starstruck, except around cricketers. Um, I remember the first time I met Sir Ian Botham. I had to have dinner with him. And we got sent, I was in Southampton, I had dinner, just to pick his brains, I was 19, 20. There was a big table, I was sat next to him, we all had a few to drink, and he was hammered. And then we're walking down the street, and I had my hero under my arm, walking down the street. We went back to his room, and he had this massive suite in the Devere. He says, you want to come up for a nightcap? I says, oh, sir, Ian, I'll come up to your room. You know, <laughs> you know I'll do anything you want, lad. Um, but then it ended a bit abruptly, because he was getting the drinks out of the minibar, and he was so drunk, he fell through the fridge, it's his head on telly. And he was marooned on the fridge, like, so I just, I left and the store never meet your heroes, eh? Um, but yeah, there's, there's so many, but Sachin, definitely the best. Thank you. Okay, we'll have one more question, then one from Trevor on Facebook Live. Let's ask this gentleman here. Last question, what's your question? What's your favourite moment in cricket? Great question, what's your favourite moment in cricket? My favourite moment in cricket wasn't when I was a professional cricketer, and it's not because it's been asked by a, a kid. It was when, no it wasn't, it was, it was when I was nine, I, I trialled for Lancashire under 11s and it was my first trials and I didn't think I'd get in and in them days, after the trial they sat you all down on the grass and if they read your name out, they'd walk off, it was awful. You imagine like they're doing that now, it wouldn't happen. And I got in the team and what happens is in the junior things when I used to play, if you got a 50 or you got five wickets, you got your county cap. And that season I got probably about four or five thirties, I got a few wickets and I didn't get my cap until presentation evening. And on presentation night they awarded me with this blue cap, little white blue cap with the rosebud on the front. And from my career, I've not kept many things. I've got nothing up in the house that suggests I was ever a cricketer, apart from this one cap. And that cap, I, I never took it off my head for weeks. So as, as good as playing for England was and as good as being a senior professional cricketer. It was them days when I was playing Lanks under 11s, under 13s, and the nicest thing now is I've got two boys who are doing the same, um, but I get more nervous watching them than I ever did playing. Great question, thank you. Okay, we've got a lot to do tonight, we've got a lot to get on with, and I know you want to meet some of your fans and crack off and stuff like that. Uh, we've got one more question from Trevor in a moment, but tonight it is all about raising money for the victims of the Manchester bomb. We've got a great auction and a great raffle coming up in a bit. Uh, we've got one more question in a minute, but before we do that, in fact, let's have one more question. This is Trevor who's been doing Facebook Live tonight. Uh, you've got a question for him. Right. This is my Facebook Live. Right, this is for the people of Manchester watching. What message would you like to say to the people of Manchester, considering what tonight's all about? Well, the thing about saying anything to the people of Manchester, I don't think you have to. The people of Manchester are amazing, aren't they? We've seen that over the past week, even before that. You know, the city comes together in its time of need, and just keep doing what you're doing. You're amazing. <laughs> 